Hello, YouTube family. Pastor Lon here, homesteading pastor here on the island at Harmony Acres Homestead in South Carolina. Hope everybody's doing well. I want to share a little bit of God's word with you today. I'll be reading out of John's writing, John chapter 9, verse 23. It reads like this. It says, Therefore said his parents, He is of age, ask him. Then again called they the man that was blind, and said unto him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. Now listen to what the young man said. He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. As we look into God's word, and you know this is where uh, the healing of the blind man was questioned by the Pharisees, and the Jews didn't believe he was blind. And uh, they they asked him how how did the healing take place, and he told them he put clay on my eyes, anointed my eyes, put clay on my eyes, and told me to go wash in the pool of Siloam, and I came seeing. And that's all I know. And I wanted to title this little devotion today, Look, This Is All I Know. And I thought about that, and I thought about my son Bradley, like this, this, this man that was blind. All he knows is he was blind, and when he met Jesus, Jesus performed the miracle, told him to go wash in the pool of Siloam. He did, and he came see. And that was very important to that blind man because he was the one that was blind. It's important to the individual the Pharisees and the Jews that were questioning everything that was going on with the healing of this boy, or this young man, uh, they were complaining because he didn't they, he didn't keep the Sabbath day holy. He healed him on the Seventh day, or they didn't believe he was of God. He didn't believe he was God's son, and they used all kinds of of things to try to say that he wasn't who he said he was. But nevertheless, the, the young man that was blind, hey, it meant everything to him, and he believed. He said. Look, this is all I know. I don't know whether he was a sinner or not. One thing I do know, I once was blind, now I see. You know, that's the same way with our spiritual walk as well. All I know is I once was blind to the fact of the truth. I once was blind to the, the precepts of God and what the Bible said. I was blinded because I was following the devil and I was following the wrong master. But when I when I went to that altar, when Jesus came, you don't have to go to the altar to be saved, but when I went down, amen, to the foot of the cross, and Jesus extended mercy and grace to me, it made all the difference in the world in my life. I once was blind to the fact that I couldn't see, but now I know why I see clearly now. Spiritually speaking, that's because of the Messiah that saved my wretched soul. So, <clears throat> you remember he went to... They asked him about it. Then they asked his parents about it. Didn't even question the fact of whether they were his parents, they knew him for sure, if he was really blind or not at birth. They even questioned whether he was blind after Jesus healed his uh, blinded eyes. And that's the way it is in the world today. They want to question everything about it. You know, just like the, the man, that, the, the lame man, that they, they, his friends toted him to the house where Jesus was and the crowd was so great and they couldn't get in the door, so they tore the tiling off the top of the house and lowered him down from the roof and, and God touched him and healed him. He had been made whole. Take up thy bed and walk. And he got up and carried his bed or carried his couch or whatever. But I've heard people um, want to debate whether it was a couch or a recliner or a cot or whatever. Who cares? They're missing the whole point. Just like the keeping the Sabbath. They, didn't, they, they were missing the whole miracle of what had happened to Jesus, uh, to this young boy by Jesus. Now, there's a couple things I wanted to remind us to jog our memories of, uh, look, this is all I know. And I take the, the Bible at face value. I believe it for what it is. And there are a lot of people that I, I've heard you on here uh, criticize the Bible, say ugly things about the Bible, say ugly things about me about proclaiming the gospel. But hey, I really don't care. Because if you don't believe the Bible, you condemned already. You can you can believe that or leave it alone. That's between you and God. But one day you're gonna stand before God and give an account for whether you believed it was right or whether you believed it was wrong. So <clears throat> I'm gonna keep moving on. I'm not gonna let anybody uh it came too late to tell me any different. I believe the Bible. I always have since I became a Christian. I believed it back when my, my grandmama tried to tell me what I needed to do to get right and quit living for the devil. I believed the Bible, but I just didn't want to live by it. I didn't want, to, I didn't want anything to do with it back then. But when Jesus came along, all things, all things are different now. So what do you know? Here's a few things I think you know, and I want to share with you some of the things that I know according to the gospel. There's a man named Daniel thrown in the lion's den. I know that according to the Bible, God rescued him and shut the lion's mouth and, and delivered him from the lion. 
I know that there was a fiery furnace. And there were three Hebrew boys that were thrown in that fiery furnace one day. And the fourth man in there was the son of God. And he walked with them in the fire and brought them out of the fire with not even the hair of their head singed or not even the smell of smoke on their clothes. I also know that this man and many others that were born blind and God opened the blinded eyes. There were people that were demon possessed and God called the demons out of those people that were demon possessed. I also know that there was a man named Lazarus, a man that, was, that had died, was dead for four days. But when Jesus got there, all I know is, according to the Bible, he said, Lazarus, come forth, and he did so. He came back to life. I also know there's a man named Peter, amen, that he loved Jesus Christ. Even though he, Peter denied Jesus Christ, Peter was the only other man other than Jesus that walked on the water. That's all I know. And the reason he walked on water then, because he had his eyes on Christ. But when he took his eyes off of Christ, he began to sink. Same thing that happened to you and I today. I also know there was a, a, a God in heaven that parted the Red Sea for Moses and the children of Israel to walk across on dry land. And he closed that sea up and destroyed Pharaoh and all of his army. I know that there was a, a dumb man, dumb folks that couldn't speak. I mean, dumb meaning not ignorant, but dumb to the fact that they can't make any sound. Mute, like my daughter Michaela. She's mute or dumb, can't speak. But God opened the, opened the eye, opened the mouth, and I, I look for him to do her like that any day. The leprosy was healed. Back in the day, leprosy was something that was uh, un incurable. And when they, someone received leprosy, they had to put in, be put in isolation. So Jesus came along and healed the leprosy. Last thing I do know is Jesus Christ got up on the third day. He got up out of the grave that day with victory over death, hell, and the grave. He ascended back up into heaven after he walked this earth for 40 days after his resurrection and appeared to many. And he's sitting at the right hand of the Father right now, interceding for you and I. So I want to encourage you today. If you don't even believe what this Bible says, just listen to the words of God. Just listen to Jesus Christ. Because this is one thing I do know, that every knee's going to bow, every tongue's going to confess that he is Lord one day. You might not believe that now. Many people didn't believe it before. But when I had a personal experience with Jesus, when he came along, this blind man, hey, he said, all I know is, I don't know whether he was a sinner or not, but one thing I do know, I was blind, now I see. Amen, the proof's in the pudding. Same way with a changed heart, mind, body, and soul of a, of a sinner man or woman. So I ask you today, if you don't know Jesus Christ, ask him to come into your heart and life today and see don't you leave, get up, get up from where you bow down a different person. There's room at the foot of the cross. Amen. Fall down at the feet of Jesus today. Ask forgiveness of your sins. And I don't care if you're a sinner and need salvation, if you're walking with Christ, there's something in your life today that you need to get under the blood that you may be straying away from him. Stay focused. Stay in tune with God and let him touch you. Because this same man that calls Lazarus from the dead, same man that calls Peter to walk on the water, same man that opened this blinded man's eyes that day is the same Jesus that can save your wretched soul. I love and appreciate you. Leave your comments below and your prayer requests, your praise reports below. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come before you again today. We thank you for still being a miracle working God. We thank you for being the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. We thank you, Lord, for being the creator of all good gifts. And I pray right now that you minister to the hearers on this, on this channel today. Whether they subscribed or not, that really don't matter to me. I just want them to hear the gospel, and I pray that you would prick their hearts and minds and let them realize that we're all going to die one day. Every one of us is going to die one day. And I pray that if somebody here that's lost will hear the words of you, not of me, but hear your word today and realize that if they'll come unto you, all of them that are, are, are laboring or heavy laden, you will give them rest. All they have to do is ask for your forgiveness. So, Father, I praise you and thank you. I pray, God, you save those that are lost, heal those that are sick and afflicted in their bodies. Continue to watch over us. Keep us in your will. Keep us safe and in the palm of thy hand. And give us souls for our hire. And, Father, we'll be careful to praise you and thank you for all you do and for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. I love and appreciate you. And until next time, remember, y'all, Jesus Christ loves you. And Jesus Christ is the answer for any and everything we're dealing with in life. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day. I love you all.